What is the significance of this summit which Pakistan is hosting in Islamabad? Of course, it is important because Pakistan will be, uh, you know, hosting at least 10, uh, you know, leaders. Three pillars were security, political and economic. In the beginning, security was uh, the uppermost, number one. The number one. But with the passage of time, economic also economic pillar also gained a lot of importance they want connectivity through pakistan mm -hmm. and i think this is an ideal situation for pakistan to maximize uh, and leverage its geography its potential so how pakistan would get benefit uh, in terms of security cooperation, counter-terrorism cooperation, from SCO to overcome this menace of terrorism. Pakistan does not lose anything. Pakistan gains everything by, be by being a member of SCO. Pakistan's destiny lies in, it, in this region. We are part of this region. We will, we, will, we will thrive in this region. Our prosperity is directly linked with this region. How you see the participation of Indian External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar in this particular conference? You think that India will be coming uh, with a positive mind? You saw the elections in India and lately Indian leaders have been accusing Pakistan. Even that in that hostile environment, if a decision has been taken by India to, to, to send its external affairs minister to Pakistan, I think to that extent, it is a positive thing. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Hello and welcome to Program Insight in B News English. Dear viewers, in the next week, 15th and 16th of October, Pakistan will be hosting Heads of Government Conference of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And uh, when we talk of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, it's a powerful regional organization. Pakistan is full member of this Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And there are two formats. One is Heads of Government. The other one is Heads of State. 15th and 16th of October, 2024, Pakistan will be hosting Heads of Government Conference of SCO in Islamabad. What is its significance? And since joining uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization as full member, what benefits Pakistan got? Initially, when this Shanghai Cooperation Organization was founded, it was meant for security cooperation, counter-terrorism, but later on, uh, the ideas, themes, and areas in Shanghai Cooperation Organization were expanded and it included science, technology, tourism, development, connectivity, economic cooperation, trade, education cooperation, and almost everything, including military exercises, defense, and security domain. To discuss this all, and since uh, joining of this organization as a full member since last uh, almost uh, six years, what Pakistan gained? And as far as this current summit, which is taking place in Islamabad, what is its significance for Pakistan? To discuss this all, fortunately, we are joined by one of the uh, very seasoned diplomat, Pakistan's uh, former ambassador to Republic of People's Republic of China, Ambassador Masood Khalid Saab. Ambassador Masood Saab, very warm welcome to program Inside in B News English. And as I said, uh, uh, please educate our viewers. What is the significance of this summit which Pakistan is hosting in Islamabad in the mid of October. Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the first time that Pakistan is hosting uh, such a high level segment of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. As you know, we became a member uh, in 2017. Uh, True. And before that, Pakistan was an observer in SU. And what is the significance? Of course, it is important because Pakistan will be, uh, you know, hosting at least 10, uh, you know, leaders uh, who will be coming. Uh, the confirmation is not uh, there yet, but we expect that uh, Chinese Premier, uh, Russian Prime Minister and other Prime Ministers will be attending this important meeting. Secondly, the mere fact that Pakistan mm -hmm is hosting this uh, conference, uh, which is being attended by China, 
Hmm. the largest country uh, in terms of uh, you know in asia in terms of economy russia True. an important country uh, the largest and this organization intergovernmental organization which is the largest in terms of area as well as population hmm. it contributes more than uh, 20% to world gdp so it's very important china russia india iran and all the central hmm. asian republics and now we have 10 members uh, of uh, and so we'll be hosting them they'll be here and at this multilateral platform so imagine the uh, the importance that you know the biggest uh, one of the biggest economies of the world mm-hmm. is here and pakistan is right in the center of this evolving paradigm of geoeconomics which is actually driving Uh, the SEO now, other than the security issues, which are also important, because primarily when SEO was created, it was in the aftermath of the disintegration of the Soviet mm-hmm. Union, and all the member states at that point in time, they wanted mm-hmm. to stabilize their borders and they wanted to deal with insurgencies and insurrections, you know, in the so- former Soviet Union, Chechnya issue, and mm-hmm. you know, in in China also a problem of ETIM. So they mm-hmm. created this organization. The, three pillars were security political and economic uh, security the beginning, political yes, and economics hmm. yes in the beginning security was uh, the uppermost number one, the number one. Hmm. but with the passage of time economic also economic pillar also gained a lot of importance i think there are more than 25 large scale projects in telecom you have also pointed out the areas hmm. in which large scale projects are being uh, implemented so pakistan is now also a very important member of bri hmm. as well, you know, we, are, we are jointly we are jointly executing the cpac and all these uh, central asian republics afghanistan they want connectivity through pakistan hmm. and i think this is an ideal situation for pakistan to maximize uh, and leverage its geography its potential to lure in foreign investment to do trade with these countries to promote regional cooperation so all these areas will i think receive priority as far as pakistan's foreign policy is concerned because you know although it's a multilateral platform uh, there will be a multilateral uh, gathering but on the sidelines we will also have bilateral meetings for example chinese premier i'm told is also uh, doing a bilateral visit so exactly. all in all uh, this is a very important uh, segment uh, which pakistan is hosting and i'm sure good results will come out of it. but i want to make one thing clear Please. this sco council of heads of government is the second highest body of shanghai cooperation organization which primarily focuses on mm. connectivity economic issues trade and organizational issues and the budget of the mm. uh, organization okay. so these issues will be priority but mm. yes because counter terrorism security cooperation su countries have been holding joint military exercises and defense exactly. ministers meeting you know so this is uh, an important platform and is gaining strength another important point which i think i need to mention here there are 19 countries in line who want to join mm. su so one can imagine the importance this organization will so gain as exactly. we as we move along as we move along ambassador masood sab you rightly mentioned that when it was uh, founded as shanghai 5 so top uh, priority was security and counter terrorism this is what my next question is pakistan is uh, confronting this uh, menace of uh, terrorism and almost every day there is an intelligence based operation in kp and particularly in balochistan balochistan is a ma- major beneficiary of cpac projects and it's on record really some of the countries have been uh, have said in the past on record that they will not tolerate this uh, china pakistan connectivity china pakistan economic corridor so pakistan do you think is paying high price for its strategic partnership with china then pakistan joined sco definitely the western bloc would be looking these all developments very closely and there are hostile elements to pakistan which are creating disturbance in balochistan so how pakistan would get benefit 
uh, in terms of security cooperation, counterterrorism cooperation, from SCO to overcome this menace of terrorism? Uh, I think this is a very important question you have raised. Of course, Balochistan is being disturbed because of its mm -hmm. importance in the context of CPAC. It is very clear. Number two, that what Pakistan will gain, Pakistan, first of all, as I mentioned, connectivity. Pakistan wants to, you know, pivot its foreign policy uh, mm -hmm. uh, towards geoeconomics because Pakistan is naturally a bridgehead between various regions, at least four regions. China's mm -hmm. Uh, connectivity through Gawadar is also aimed at reaching out to Middle East, to Iran, to Afghanistan and greater Eurasian region. And vice versa, the Central Asian republics, realizing the importance of Gawadar, our ports, yes. they want to connect with Pakistan. They want to promote yes. this connectivity, physical connectivity, so that they can trade with the outside world. So this is a God-given opportunity for Pakistan, number one. Number yes. two, uh, Pakistan has, uh, I mean, unfortunately, uh, we, we have had such huge losses in the fight against terrorism. But True. at the same time, the experience we have gained, and you know that there is a regional anti-terrorist structure, which is called RAS, exactly. which works uh, in Tashkent under SEO. Mm -hmm. So it coordinates all the, uh, you know, uh, cooperative uh, uh, arrangements and cooperative processes within SCO as far as terrorism is concerned, as far as uh, militancy is concerned. So that is the formal uh, mechanism. And under that mechanism, Pakistan also cooperates with the SCO member states. And Pakistan can share, and Pakistan does share its mm -hmm. experience and knowledge, uh, you know, which it gained in the fight against terrorism. So these two are concrete, you know, leverages we have. Thirdly, mm -hmm. I think in the process, Pakistan has got a new platform, multilateral mm -hmm. platform, which is, you know, becoming more and more important. As I said, 19 countries like from Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, mm -hmm. UAE. I mean, these countries, they are very important countries and they are our friends. Exactly. They are our close partners. So if SU expands further, Pakistan's diplomatic space, strategic mm -hmm. space, within our neighborhood, within mm. this uh, region, uh, will become more uh, pronounced. This is, And I think that Pakistan does not lose anything. Pakistan gains mm. everything by, be by being a member of SEO. Now, all these machinations will continue against CPAC, against BRI. We cannot stop it, but we have to be careful. As far as relationship with China is concerned, look, I have a question to raise. Because mm -hmm. I'm asked this question again and again, how do we balance relationship between, you know, China and the United States? Uh, well, but, but more important, mm -hmm. aren't we members of several other multilateral platforms where mm -hmm. USA and China sit together? And there are mm -hmm. many countries uh, uh, of the world which sit on uh, multilateral platforms such as SEO and there, the U.S. is also a member. China is also a member. We are part of the ARF, ASEAN Regional Forum, where U.S. and China have skirmishes from time to time. Pakistan is there. So I don't think that there is any ground or any cause, for for for, for example, uh, for 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 the United States uh, mm -hmm. to you know sort of uh, make this an issue vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan mm -hmm. a membership of SEO. So I think this. This uh, argument does not hold any, uh, you know, uh, ground. So uh, we and we are not we are not using SEO against uh, any any, country, other, against country. any other country. This is primarily mm -hmm. for Pakistan's socio-economic development, for Pakistan's connectivity, for investment, mm -hmm. trade, and Pakistan's promotion of its exports, learning from other countries, and of course, people-to-people -people connectivity. This platform okay. also provides us a very useful forum for promoting people to people connect. So with Central Asian Republics, with Iran, uh, we have traditionally, you know, enjoyed historical relations, religious, uh, mm. cultural, ethnic, linguistic. So mm. uh, this platform provides us to cement and strengthen those uh, bonds as well. So all in all, I think uh, it was a good decision on the part of Pakistan that we became a member and Mind you, sir, that we uh, remain uh, an observer for good, I think, uh, what, 12 years.
12 years, and exactly. It was a hard earned membership, which, and I mean, Pakistan's destiny lies in it in this region. We are part of this region. We will, we will, we will thrive in this region. Our prosperity is directly linked with this region. And being, mm-hmm. you know, a, a close friend, a partner of China, China values this relationship. We value our time-tested friendship. It's a big gain. With Russia, our relationship has improved. It's improving constantly. Russia looks at Pakistan, you know, now uh, not strictly through the lens of India, which it used to do mm-hmm. before. It's the paradigm is changing. So I think it's a God-given opportunity for Pakistan to take full advantage of, uh, irrespective of our relations with India. Mm-hmm. India is the only country which writes a dissenting note uh, mm-hmm. when, when a joint statement is issued by the SEO leaders on BRI. Mm-hmm. So that is their outlook. Uh, that mm-hmm. is their sovereign thinking. Uh, but my point is, that we have to look uh, westward now. So Sark how is already, you see, dis- Sark is already dysfunctional. Exactly. Sark is not this is I, exactly. So Sark this, is already this, dysfunctional. True. Sark is not functioning. So mm-hmm. SEO is now becoming more important. SEO is now expanding its platter of cooperation. Why not take advantage of it? Hmm. So uh, as you said that you are concluding, why not take advantage of this? when SARC has become dysfunctional. This is what my next question is. India was supposed to be represented in this uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Council, Council of Head of Government's Conference, when its external affairs minister is coming. And we had a past experience when there was SCO Foreign Minister's Conference in Goa. The moment Pakistani delegation departed for Pakistan, the entire world witnessed the tone and tenor by the Indian External Affairs Minister, which was very unfortunate. So uh, how you see the participation of Indian External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar in this particular conference? You think that India will be coming uh, with a positive mind? Well, uh, firstly, uh, Mr. Jay Shankar has publicly stated that he will be courteous and civil. So exactly. we'll hold him to his uh, pledge, number one. Pledge. Okay. Number two is that uh, India has been participating in these meetings, I think. Uh, the last meeting also, Prime Minister Modi did not go. And mm. the external affairs minister represented India. So I think that is the pattern. Mm. But on its own, given our uh, you know bilateral relationship, which is, of course, very acrimonious and unfortunately bitter, uh, the visit itself is significant uh, mm-hmm. in the sense that, uh, you know, there are, uh, you saw the elections in India and lately Indian leaders have been accusing mm-hmm. Pakistan, even that in that hostile environment, if a decision has been taken by India to, to, to send its external affairs minister to Pakistan, I think to that extent, it is a positive thing. Mm-hmm. But... At the same time, I think India knows that it has to, it should attend rather, this Mm. important meeting where prime ministers uh, will be there of member states Mm. and uh, to sort of also uh, balance or counterbalance China's presence Mm. because China's influence in SEO is, uh, uh, you know, uh, very much there. It's, it's, it's the most influential country. China and Russia actually uh, are the driving force. So in exactly. a way, India's presence in SEO a conference will also, uh, India will try to sort of counterbalance, not I just mm. what I can say, not the leave, not lo- not leave the ground <laughs> mm. to, to China. So that could also be a factor in the consideration of Indian decision. But I think if uh, this, uh, yes, unfortunately in Goa, uh, there was a bitterness uh, mm-hmm. and Indian side did not show, uh, you know, enough uh, magnanimity, I must say. But I'm sure that I'm sure that uh, Pakistan uh, will be a good host and uh, uh, we will, we will, of course, keep it neutral because in any case in SEO mm. bilateral issues are not raised. But on the on the margins, if something dramatic happens, 
if both mm-hmm. countries decide to sit and at least talk, I think that would be good. But at the moment, actually, personally, I was expecting that India will send any minister to this mm-hmm. conference. But when this announcement took place that the external affairs minister is coming, so I think uh, uh, that in itself is significant. Although he, Jay Shankar, Mr. Jay Shankar has also said that he is not coming for any bilateral talks. So we should not uh, have high hopes, high expectations. But at the same time, <laughs> there is a caveat, you know, India-Pakistan relations uh, have seen dramatic <laughs> twists and turns in the past, so one never knows. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to say more than that. And I think we should not raise our expectations. Uh, hopefully, this conference will be smooth and uh, Pakistan is preparing, uh, you know, uh, I mean, doing everything to welcome our uh, honorable guests. And given our tradition of hospitality, I'm sure that it will be a memorable event in SEO. Yes, Ambassador Masood Sab, you rightly pointed out that Shanghai Cooperation Organization has a potential to grow, but this what my question is, what is the future of this organization, which was initially founded uh, on on the issue of security and counterterrorism? Later on, it expanded. And as you rightly mentioned in your analysis, there are so many geostrategic, geoeconomic developments, new blocks are uh, in the making, uh, paradigm shifts in the region, globally, wars, conflict, so many things are there. So keeping in view these all developments, how you see the future of Shanghai Cooperation Organization and its charter? You see, SEO has evolved and mm. SEO has gained strength in the last 10 years or so because it started as Shanghai Five, as you have mentioned in 1996, mm. and then exactly. it morphed into SEO when Uzbekistan joined. Now it mm. has 10 members. Obviously, all these countries which are lining up to join uh, SEO Mm -hmm. Uh, realize its significance and the importance it will gain as time passes, as we move along. So that is a given. So it will gain importance because China, uh, being the second largest economy of the world, is playing Mm -hmm. a very important role in the Eurasian region through its BRI. It's, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, President Xi and President Putin have held 40 meetings in the last few years. And their mm-hmm. relationship is now a, a strategic partnership of no limits. So these are the two powerful countries which are, you know, sort of driving a steering SU. So obviously, and their interests are there. Strategic interests, political interests, security interests, economic interests. So combined, when you combine all these interests, mm-hmm. of course, uh, security remains primordial. Very mm-hmm. important because none of them want, uh, you know, any any destabilization of their societies, their countries. So they, there is a convergence on that count. There is a convergence on that count amongst mm-hmm. all member states, including Pakistan. Afghanistan is a problem. We are trying to solve it or at least address it regionally. Hopefully, things will uh, become stable and rational uh, as far as Afghanistan is concerned. But other than Afghanistan, all the regional countries agree that there is no room for extremism, militancy, separatism, and terrorism. <clears throat> so that will remain that will remain a, a top priority. And at the same time, these projects which are uh, in the blueprint, you know, energy projects, connectivity projects, telecommunication mm-hmm. projects, uh, they will, I think, slowly, uh, you know, make progress. So I think it's a good opportunity for Pakistan uh, to be uh, to remain tucked in in this uh, process of regional cooperation. And, and, and this will strengthen Pakistan's, uh, you know, uh, diplomatic profile. And Pakistan is already uh, mm-hmm. seen as an important country of South Asia. And especially after CPAC, uh, its regional and international profile has enhanced considerably. But rest is up to us. Of course, we have also to do our own homework. Exactly. Uh, to to make CPAC successful. You uh, referred to uh, this particular fact that the Chinese Premier will also be visiting Islamabad uh, almost uh, three days uh, before this particular summit. How do you see this bilateral visit by Chinese Premier and how much it will be beneficial as far as Pakistan-China bilateral cooperation, bilateral relationship, CPAC and these all things, of course, 
as we heard from diplomatic sources, a number of agreements and MOUs are expected to be signed. Do you think uh, this uh, area of security and counterterrorism will also be focused during talks, keeping in yes, the I'm sure. unfortunate incident? I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure because uh, unfortunate incident would happen in Karachi yesterday. I think uh, this will be taken up and Chinese are concerned. We are also concerned. We share the concern and we are taking all possible measures to improve the security. So counterterrorism security for Chinese is very important if, CIP, if CPAC has to advance. So that is very much there. But that does not mean that this one incident is going to impact time-tested friendship of Pakistan and China. That's not going to happen. Uh, those who are hoping for that kind of outcome uh, will surely... Uh, be disappointed. So we, we will discuss bilateral cooperation, bilateral relations, progress of CPAC. We are entering into phase two of CPAC. So all these things, uh, you know, will come under review. And I'm sure it will be a good visit and it will give a further boost to our bilateral cooperation with our time-tested uh, friend. Last uh, but not the least, uh, how you see uh, the future of Pakistan under uh, this particular Shanghai Cooperation Organization CPAC is project of BRI. Are you optimistic that in, in the time to come, Balochistan will rise? All CPAC related projects will uh, definitely be completed in time. And Pakistani people, basically, it's the public which is awaiting the dividend benefits or dividend effects, really. That has to reach to no, the government. Sure. Yes, CPAC has to benefit the people at large. And that is primarily uh, the purpose also. Uh, there may have been some loopholes, there may have been some gaps, but it is, I think, those gaps can be rectified. All the regions, all the provinces of Pakistan should feel satisfied and happy uh, that the CPEC dividends uh, are shared equally and indiscriminately. Balochistan is important, and but I, I would conclude by saying, uh, uh, Mr. Mateen Hader, that much work needs to be done uh, at our end. Uh, we yeah. should really comprehensively undertake a review of CPAC and, and the problems and encountered and what are the handicaps, what are the gaps, sorry, uh, which, uh, you know, which exists and which can be, which can be, which can be addressed. And I'm sure that yeah. we are capable of doing that. And Pakistan has a bright future if we really mm -hmm. decide uh, our destiny is, our destiny is in our hands. Mm -hmm. No one else, no foreign power, no foreign country. So we have to take charge and get going. Thank you. Very Thank much. you so much, Thank indeed, you. Ambassador Masood Khalid Sahib, Pakistan's long serving ambassador to People's Republic of China. And he's also known for his hard work in making Pakistan China friendship stronger. And other than friendship, the credit of CPAC also goes to Ambassador Masood Khalisab. Thank you so much. Despite your busy schedule, you spoke to Program Inside in videos English. And dear viewers, still have a next program. Allah is and goodbye from studios.